Hello and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Lotro with me, Valfellian. Um, probably the first thing I should point out is that it's actually been a couple of months since I last recorded for this because uh, I started recording in March just after up Update 10 launched and we're now into Update 11 because it's now June. Uh, so there's been loads of changes um, and probably the first two ones you're probably going to notice is in the bottom right of my screen. So instead of having uh, alerts for mail and new deeds and all that stuff, it's now chucked in the pending alerts panel which we can click to see what we've got and apparently we've got mail uh, so I'll need to check that. But also another nice one is Hobbit presents. So we click that. Uh, so every day, you don't have to be a VIP for this, uh, anyone gets this. Every day if you log in you can claim a silver present for free so let's do that. And the slot machine is going to give us Rubbish. If only it was the item above, that would have been quite nice. Um, what a shame. But uh, if you're a VRP, you can also open a gold one. Um, but I've opened mine this week. And if you've already opened yours today or this week for the silver or gold, you can actually uh, get extra ones using Miffle coins. But I don't want to get too involved in that. But uh, let's just say that you can get those from the store. Or you can win those in... Uh, these boxes and other things if you're lucky. But uh, so yeah, besides that then, that's that's the first thing I wanted to show off. And it's also telling me that I can get that in the in the menu now, which is there. Lovely. Um, but yeah, you'll notice as well that Tristana is now geared up and looking pretty awesome with uh, a cosmetic gear there, which I've equipped. But uh, today we're gonna head off. Uh, actually, there's one more thing I should probably say before we go any further. I have now joined the kin, which has granted me these two extra skills down here. So when you're in a kinship, um, actually no, not, not that one, just this one. Uh, when you're in a kinship, you can travel to their kinship house with a skill that you'll be granted as soon as you join the kin. Um, so I've got that now in addition to my personal house. So I'll just keep those skills out of the way. Um, yeah, I think the last time I said uh, we're going to go to... or well, stay in the Shire and do some questing, but I'm actually going to go to Bree in this one, or Bree Land, to be precise. So the first thing we need to do is go to the Stable Master, which if I load the map, we have quite a bit of lag. Um, Stable Master is in the southwest of Mickle Delving, which will be marked on your map. And I think this is probably the first time I've used a Stable Master, so I'll talk about that when I get there. But uh, these are the these are how you travel around in Middle Earth, or one of the ways you can. But uh, a lovely day. The quick way of doing it. Um, so if you click on him, you can see all your destinations, and it will show all destinations these days, not just the ones that you've discovered. Um, so if you see a horsey icon next to it, which probably doesn't look, look like a horse because it's so small, but it is a horse's head. Uh, that means it's swift travel. So that means you'll travel instantly. Whereas, if it hasn't got that, it's just a normal travel, and you will travel at horse speed instead of doing a, a quick jump on a load screen. Uh, and the yellow ones means you haven't discovered that location yet. Um, so you can't travel there for coin. So if you mouse over that, it says, money cannot be used to travel there. Basically, because I haven't discovered it. Um, however, going back to those Miffle coins again, if you have Miffle coins, you don't need to have discovered the destination to travel there. So uh, they can be quite handy for getting around in uh, Middle Earth if you uh, haven't been those places yet. But, uh, you'll notice I don't actually have much money. Um, but oh well. Um, where are we going to go? We're going to go to Comb in uh, this one. And I think essentially we're going to be questing in, in Breland because that's, that's the region I most enjoy. Because the Shire is just full of uh, deliver pies here, take the post there, lots of running around. Breland's always been my favourite for questing, so I'll, I'll do that. So uh, if you were a, a man, you would have finished in Archit, which we were briefly in as uh, our Hobbit, before we went off to the Shire. There we go. Um, I should probably say as well, if you find a new stable master you haven't discovered yet, it will have a blue horse icon above his head. So if you see one of those flashing, speak to the guy. What can I do for you? 
and then you get a whooshing sound and then that will turn to the normal brown horse icon which means you have discovered it um, this gentleman has a quest which is probably related to one of my expansion pre-orders so I'm not going to do that but um, up that road is the way to archers so if we open the map that's the road that's going up into Archit. So if you started as a man, you would have come out the intro area in Archit. You can talk to some people there, and then they will send you down to Combe, which is where we are now. Um, so in Combe, there's going to be loads and loads of quests. So we're going to speak to everyone and pick everything up. Um, okay, so this gentleman has a silver ring above his head instead of a gold ring, like that lady over there. And what that means is that he has a quest that we can do, but it's slightly above our level, so we can't pick it up yet. So basically come back uh, in a level or two, and he should have that. So uh, meanwhile, let's go uh, pick up all these other ones. There's a finely dressed lady there. Could I speak with you a moment? Yes, you may. Uh, and she's going to say loads of stuff, but uh, I'm not going to bother reading the quest text. But, uh, I normally do in uh, the I'm first sorry time. To trouble you, but will you help me? Yes, all right. If you shut up, um, I normally read the quest text the first time I do stuff because it can be quite interesting uh, a lot of the time. But uh, I've I've taken so many characters through here, I pretty much know what each quest involves anyway. Um, so I don't need to read too much into that. Okay, and um, we're going to go to the east now, on the way out of Combe. Pick up all these quests. Why just take a moment of your time? Would you do something for me? Should I bother picking these up? Hmm. I might do. But uh, a quest ring with an anvil in it basically means it's a crafting related Stay quest. Stay and hear me out. And they're only pretty much uh, at the start of the game just to get you used to crafting. Uh, but padded gloves I can do because I'm going to be able to tailor. So I will take that one. Might I take a moment of your time? No, you may not. With your funny accent. Um, so one of the quests you probably would have got in Archer if you were a man. I'm not sure if I've got one. Um, no, there's probably one in the Shire as well, but every area should have a quest shortly after you get out the uh, the introduction area which will send you to a crafting hall so in Combe this is just uh, on the east side of town and we're gonna go in here and inside in any crafting area you should be able to find a mistress of apprentices so if we speak to her and I have actually trained myself into something there we go I can't remember if that was on the camera or not, but um, if you go to Mistress of Apprentices, you can choose which vocation you want your crafting to be. So um, every vocation, of which there are seven, um, is comprised of three professions. Um, so for example, Armourer is Metalsmith, which kind of makes metal objects like armour. Prospector, which mines ores and tailor which makes uh, like leather armors and light medium armors that kind of stuff um, so I've already chosen explorer which is prospecting tailoring and forestry which is why I've got these introduction quests from her now as well um, and you can access your crafting via the crafting panel which is this hammer and anvil button that should be in uh, your toolbar thing down the bottom there and should also be accessible by the menu and the shortcut is T if you want to open that um, but once you open that you can see your free professions in here and how well you're doing on those so at the minute I've done absolutely nothing um, but have I got no I haven't it's probably in my mailbox um, so I'm just gonna take these free crafting quests Would you do something for me would you do something for me? Could I speak with you a moment? Shut up, woman. Um, and I'm just going to quickly run back outside and go to the mailbox to pick up my supplies because I've already got a 
few bits and pieces. But uh, to give a basic overview of crafting them, um, let's start with Prospector, because Prospector is probably one of the easiest ones to get started in, because you just have to go around and uh, collect ores. Um, so if we expand those, you can see what recipes you can make. So Apprentice is the name of the tier, it's the first of uh, eight tiers at the minute. And each tier requires a certain amount of experience, and I've just run past the mailbox. Um, there we go. So you'll probably notice everything's just gone green on the crafting panel, and that's basically saying I can make 24 copper ingots based on what items I've got in my bags at the minute. Um, so on every recipe you can see what tools you require, so I need prospectors tools. Now when you um, learn a craft at the craft hall you will be given a collection of tools like prospectors tools or forester's axe and you should have three tools, one for each of your vocations. Um, but they will be inferior versions and if you were to speak to the supplier straight after learning your skills um, what can I do for you? Then if we switch to tool, because normally these would be inferior prospectors tools or inferior tailors tools and they break really easy. So uh, to get started just, just trash those and buy these ones which are the normal ones and they uh, last a bit longer until you can craft better tools or get someone to craft you better tools. Um, so I've already got those however I was really lucky with one of my Hobbit presents yesterday or the day before and I've got a universal toolkit which uh, is normally available in the store and that's basically like a, a level 55 set of tools and that is awesome so and it's also got no level requirements so you can use that from level 1 if you want and that is that is going to keep me going pretty much until the end game at the moment until I get to probably about level 75 then I might need to replace it um, so I'm just going to equip that and to show you on your character panel, that goes in this slot, the tool slot there. Um, but if you're still using these basic tools, you can only have one equipped at a time. Um, so you would need to equip that in order to do stuff. So I've got prospectors tools equipped, but if I put the axe in, that's red again. So you need to make sure you always have the correct tools in there. But because I've got the universal toolkit, that basically is every tool in one. Um, so that is very useful. Saves me having to swap items and go mad. Um, but anyway, I digress. Where were we? So Prospector. Um, we need the tools equipped. So I've got tools equipped. I can remove those from my bar now because I don't need those. Um, and we require a forge on the facility required. So there's a forge over here and you'll notice as I go near it, it will go green to say I can do that. Um, and then we need the various ingredients required for the copper ingot recipe. So in this case it's we have 49 chunks of ore but we need two per item. So basically it works out at 24 copper ingots we can make. So I can uh, click make or make all. I can enter a specific amount if I only want to make say 10 for example. So I'll just let her craft away like that and you will see I'm getting XP from crafting as well which is that plus 50 XP above my head. But I'm also getting copper ingots, which are going straight into my inventory over there. Now you also know on the crafting, uh, it's saying Apprentice Craft XP earned 8. So for every recipe, I'm getting 8 XP. So you'll see that slowly filling up that bar on the left, which is proficiency on the brown anvil. Now, what that basically means is you need to complete that up to the top in order to unlock the next tier of crafting. But at the same time it will also unlock a second tier of Apprentice called Mastery. And during that tier you're able to uh, put in some extra stuff which is uh, kind of greyed out behind this bit at the minute. Which allows you to uh, have a critical chance when you craft that recipe. Um, which basically means you can make a better version of it. So you can make a better armour or a better weapon. Or in the case of uh, these ingots, it basically means we just get more for 
each recipe, which is quite nice. And she's smithing away, nearly half, well, just over halfway. Um, in the case of prospecting, you can want to turn your ores into ingots, and then ingots will be used by either weapon smiths, armor smiths, or jewelers, depending on which ingot it is and what they're trying to do. But uh, you could also sell it on the auction house if you want to make a good bit of money. Um, but if you're looking to make early game money, I would say you're probably better off selling the ores rather than the ingots, because quite a lot of people, myself included, will be lazy at high levels and can't be bothered to go around and collect all the ores. So we'll just pay extortionate prices on the auction hall to just buy them and turn them into ingots ourselves to level the crafting on our orts. Um, but we're nearly there, so you're going to see what's going to happen. There's going to be a tutorial tooltip pop up as soon as that ends. And then loads of new stuff will appear over here. And we've got a bit of lag. There we go. My level has changed to 8. Well, hey, I've leveled up. Wonderful. Um, hopefully I can get to level 10 by the end of this video, because then we can have some cool, cool stuff that I've got waiting for next uh, episode. So, unfortunately we were one short, damn it. But we have some, some tin ore, which we can turn into that. So I'll just uh, show the make button this time. So I can scroll those, or I can delete that and put one in myself. I'll just say make. And she'll make a tin ingot. ka -ching! Apprentice Prospector Proficiency. You are now proficient at this. You can now do critical success things. And you may now use journeyman prospector recipes. And also, we can now do the mastery tier. Which is the yellow anvil. Um, so it says you can now work towards mastering the tier that you are now proficient in. You must be master of all previous tiers before mastering a new tier. And that's important because that confuses some people. So say for example, if I was to complete the journeyman bar now, that would unlock the third tier, which is called expert, but it would not unlock mastery for journeyman because I need to complete mastery for apprentice first. Um, which I can't quite do, but uh, I'll just let Tristana craft the rest of those tin ingots. But you'll see now that the, the optional part is now lit up. So for every recipe I make, I now have a 5% critical chance. And if I do crit, I will get 3 tin ingots instead of 1 tin ingot. And it will make a nice little whooshy effect. And it will say in, uh, in chat. So let's see if we can get one. But... Uh, also, I can refine ingots, which basically means we take two ingots we've already got and make it into something better. So in this case, it will be bronze. So we need one copper ingot and one tin ingot, and combined they will give me two bronze ingots. Or if I crit, it will be four bronze ingots. I don't think she's going to do it, is she? It's only 5% chance, it's not a lot. I've got a new title as well for being level 8, which is, oh it's not from being level 8, it's just from uh, from crafting, so Tristana, Apprentice Prospector. So every time you get an, a, a uh, proficiency or mastery in a, a crafting tier, you will get a title for it. Um, what the hell, I'm going to make some bronze ingots while I'm at it. Um, now I can't actually show you what I can do with those ingots because my vocation doesn't make use of ingots, which is a shame. But I can show you forestry. Did I not have... I do have wood, there we go. So in the case of wood, I'm going to need a workbench. I think there's one, yeah, over there. Uh, but I'm also going to need lumps of wax. Now, some crafting recipes will require stuff that you gather yourself. So wood, hides, ores, that kind of stuff. Gems. 
Uh, and some items, like lump of wax, you will need to buy it from the supplier in the craft hall. So uh, in this case, the, the gentleman was over by the door, and I'll just wait until my last ingots are crafted before we go over there. Come on, Smith Harder. Alright, there we go. So, Mr. Supplier has actually got some How requests. How can I be of service? What can I do for you? Which is those crafting quests. But if we browse the shop. Greetings. Now, we needed Lump of Wax. So these are alphabetical. Uh, lump of wax, there we go. So for every recipe we've got, we need two logs of rowan wood and one lump of wax. So I'm just going to buy a load for now. I can't buy a load for now because I'm not rich enough to do it. There we go, 25, I can afford that. Um, and we're going to go to the workbench and same again, really. We need all those, and then we can craft those. We're going to get 8 XP. And that's going to go towards Apprentice. So then uh, planks will be used by woodworkers to craft wood objects. Uh, which again I can't do on this character. Um, but I can send those to one of my alts who is a woodworker. So for example that would craft uh, spears and javelins that wardens use. Or lawmasters staves. Uh, bows and crossbows. All kinds of stuff. Now in this case I'm not going to quite get up to uh, 200. But the other thing a, uh, a forester does is uh, use hides, which are animal skins. Um, so when you kill animals like bears or wolves you will probably get some hides and you can uh, turn those into levers. And that's a very, very easy way of levelling your forester skill. So we'll probably be gathering quite a few of those. And Taylor, which we're probably going to look over in another episode once I've got a bit of hides that I can turn into levers, is where we make light and medium armour. And the Warden is in a medium armour class, so we'll be able to uh, make our own armour throughout the game. Um, except for when we use the awesome armours we can get from uh, instances and that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, I need some hides before I can do those, so I'll show those in a later episode. Plus I'm sure you're probably getting a bit bored of standing around in the crafting hall, so I'll just take what those quests. For, for now, I will not bother with those in this episode, I don't think. Um, so let's go back outside. We've got all these quests from the people of Combe who want us to help them. And what they're basically saying is, I will need to go outside of the east of town. So let's remove all those and put these quests back in there. So we're now going to go out the east side of town and you will see all these quest rings are around by the lake or east in uh, Chatwood North. So we're going to speak to all these people. And there's the first one over there, Constable Wren. I know by heart, even though that just appeared just as I said it, but How can so I we've be got two quests. We need to collect a fishing pole. Greetings. And talk to Covel Woodwright. At first we're just gonna hop over there. I should probably show you as well. When you get um when you learn a, a crafting vocation in the craft hall, you normally get, depending on which ones you've got, some kind of tracking skill. So if you're a prospector, you can track mines. If you're a forester, you can track wood. Scholars can track... Um, I don't know what you call it, but the relics and stuff. Um, and farmers can track crops. So if I turn on track mines, there's none nearby. You can only have one of these tracking skills active at a time. There we go. So I put on track wood, and on the radar there is a blue arrow, like so, which says Rowan Branches 76 metres in that direction. So if we go over there, when it comes into range it will be like a uh, an axe and a, a 
pickaxe, is that maybe? On the map. And look, there we go, it's directed me straight to a rowan branch. I can just right click on that, as long as I've got the correct tool, so in this case it would need to be a, an axe. Um, and I've got all those stuff, so I can loot those. So I've got two logs of rowan wood, which I can use um, to make some wooden planks. And I've also got some common flax fibre, which is getting a bit advanced in, in the crafting. Um, but that's basically using uh, for use in critically... Oh dear, it's an angry bear. Kick him in the face! Bang! Uh, did the bear drop hides? Yes, he did. There we go, one light hide and some other bits and pieces. Um, but common flax fibre is the tailor crit item for Apprentice tier anyway. Um, so we need to explore these stumps with the pickaxe because that's what you use to mine trees apparently. Um, so basically anything that's flashy in the game is something you can definitely interact with. So if you see something flashy go and uh, try and use it basically. So we found absolutely nothing. Wonderful. There's a badger. Don't like badgers. Get out of there. Bang! Look, we made him lift off the ground. Fantastic. Um, oh! Wood. Oars. Something. There we go. There's a nice big waterfall down there. And there's a, uh, a door. So we'll probably have a look in there at some point. I know what exactly is in there, and I know when we're going to need to go in there. And I'm sure we will do that on the camera at some point. There we go, jabbing up the badger's bum. There we go. Whoa! -ho! Jump attack! Dead. There we go. Um, there's some rabid pigs. Javelin! Missed! It'll take ages to try and kite them around, just showing off. Smack him with your spear. We can have some bacon sandwiches. Right, so where are we going? Now, our quest thing is pointing to the nearest quest, which is west over there. But we don't want to go back into Comb yet, because I want to go and do all the other quests. So I'm just going to ignore that. And I'm just going to remove it from the quest tracker as well, just so it stops pointing towards the nearest one, which is completed. Um, so we're now in the lumber camp. And in the lumber camp, we're going to have even more quests. Can I speak with you? So we need to defeat eight wolves at the wolf den. We need to Stay and have some talk to Philbert Burrows. Speak to I'm this gentleman. Sure it will do no good, but we need to collect Sally the dog's you. chain. So now we're going to go into the Chetwood, which is full of massive spiders, and they're not very friendly. I think the spider's even bigger than me. It's crazy. Wouldn't want to find one of those in the bath, that's for sure. Come on, spider. So there we go, it's the first spider we've killed in Breeland, so we've got a new deed of Spider Slayer. But uh, I think I'll, I'll talk about deeds in the next episode, otherwise there's going to be so much that I'm going to be covering in this one. Because um, we've already talked about uh, stables and crafting, and something's just got angry. Giant spider. use an awesome new spear and I will have one soon but it'll be the next video um, you will notice there's two rowan branches there I'm actually tracking uh, ore at the minute so I can't see those on the map but I can still uh, gather those I 
monstrous dusk wolf. I see as well on the, on the tool tip for the branches it tells you what kind of uh, tool you need and what kind of crafting ability you would need. So for example if you're going into a high level area than you are currently you might not be able to mine a specific type of wood because it might be the next tier and what well, one you haven't got yet so uh, just be aware of that if you can't mine it it will be because of that and it will tell you why. Defeated wolves at the wolf den, one of eight. And the wolf den is just slightly north of us. So let's go over this hill. Spider! Ambush! And there is also a reason why all these guys have different coloured names, but I'll probably again talk about that in the next one. because that might be a slightly longer subject to explain. So down there, there's all the uh, the wolves in the wolf den. And we need to kill a few more of these guys. I keep trying to build longer gambits than I can actually do with them. My normal warden can build up to five in a sequence. But yeah, we're nearly at level nine, which would be fantastic. There we go. Five, this one will be. Uh, yeah, in the case of things like, in this case, javelin throwing, or for hunters uh, shooting a bow while on the move, you will have an increased miss chance. Um, so it's best to stand still when you're throwing stuff, or shooting stuff. Bang! So there we go, we leveled up, we're level 9, we're getting there. And we need one more wolf. Damn it, I've pulled two of them. There's also a corpse hidden in this bush. Or behind that bush. And you will find uh, things like corpses or boxes or bags, satchels, that kind of stuff, and you can interact with them. So in this case, we can loot this guy, steal his shoes, or in this case, silver coins, and some uh, crafting bits and pieces. And we can steal those and run away. Um, so that's the wolf quest done. And look, there's a tin deposit. And these are rare. But for prospecting in the apprentice tier, there's two types of uh, of ore, as we've kind of already seen. There's copper, which is the common one, and there's tin, which is the rare one. And tin tends to be extremely rare because everyone wants tin at the low levels. So everyone mines the tin, and then there's no more tin. So it's always getting that worth getting that. But you can probably sell that for quite a bit of money on the auction house if you're looking to make. Uh, Loads of money just after you start the game. No, oh, I've aggroed it. I think I've probably already gone a bit too far for that one. Yeah, I have. 
so I should probably explain what I just did there. If you want to go towards a specific quest, but it's not necessarily the closest one, you can right click it and go set as quest guide focus and that will force the arrow to always point towards a specific quest. Now I'm just going to go over to this guy and I think we'll stop there for this episode because this has probably gone on quite a while now. Uh, so let's just mine that, hopefully not get too close to the spider because otherwise he'll chase us. And there is Posco's uncle, who's very concerned about the state of things. Very concerned indeed. Just so a you, moment. You shouldn't be out this time of night in a wood full of giant spiders and wolves, then, should you? And uh, this gentleman has entrusted us with a most difficult quest, which is to go collect his handkerchief, which he's dropped. Um, why can't you just buy a new one? I'll craft you one. Um, but no, so uh, I think we'll stop there then. And next episode, we will continue questing in the Chetwood. So, see you then.